Hello, today we're at the Renaissance Hotel for a spotlight interview taking place prior to the networking event, which is Movers and Shakers. Movers and Shakers is corporate networking at prestige locations such as the Renaissance, and it's held every month. Now, we've been asking a lot of people in these interviews about assimilation and business, doing business in Thailand, and I have to be very, very, very quick with the questions I'm going to ask. But the gentleman I'm going to speak to today has been asking questions all his life for a living. It's David Armstrong. David, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Paul. Thank you. David, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. I am, um, as far as I know, touch wood, <laughs> um, I'm in good health. I'm living in uh, one of the most exciting and interesting cities in the world. Mm. Um, my, my wife, uh, tragically, I think, uh, passed away about 11 or so years ago, mm. but I've recently remarried. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is lovely, um, and I've um, I've just um, finishing up now uh, a career of more than um, more than forty years in the media. Yes, and uh, I'm looking forward to just kind of enjoying myself for a while. Well, you know, it's to, to, you know, see, you say forty years, like well, you know, it's just something I do as a little hobby sort of thing. But 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 the reality is that you know you have you've carved a career out of this and. Uh, the, the, the publications that you have either worked for or went on to be, be the, the managing director, uh, th there's quite a lot, isn't there? <laughs> well, I started out as a student editor yeah. <coughs> at university. Uh, then I worked on uh, The Australian, which is a national newspaper in Australia, um, a magazine called The Bulletin, which sadly has uh, gone the way of uh, quite a lot of print media these days mm -hmm. and doesn't exist anymore, but that was a, like the time on Newsweek mm -hmm. of Australia. <coughs> Uh, have South China Morning Post in, in Hong Kong, the, the Canberra Times in Australia, and um, they, was, they were all in editorial roles. Mm -hmm. uh, then here, um, I was the managing director of Post Publishing, which is the Bangkok Post mm -hmm. Company, and um, I've just recently retired as chairman of Post Media in Phnom Penh, which Phnom is Phnom Penh Post. Yes, okay. Um, one of the recurring themes that we've had in these series of interviews is the uh, assimilation if you like or you know how to survive uh, as a as a farang doing business or working in Thailand uh, because it, it brings with it certain challenges which uh, may be uh, business might be cultural what what has your experience been what's the if you like the the challenges and what are maybe the delights Look, there have been, there've been two kind of challenges working in, in Bangkok, uh, in, in the business I was in. One is the normal, <coughs> the normal challenge that a, a foreigner has in uh, coming to a, a strange city, working with people of a different culture. And I must say, I, I found it a little bit difficult to first have to really kind of be thinking about what's going on, what you're doing, and observing what the responses are, mm -hmm. so to make sure you don't, um, you don't make too many mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I found um, generally working with Thai people to be a delight. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I guess you had to be a little bit, a little bit careful about uh, how you behave yourself. Yes. It's, it's not true that you're not allowed to get angry at Thais. It is true that you lose a lot of respect if you lose your temper. Yes. Which you can you can be a little bit stern, mm -hmm. um, but generally I found them a delight. And if there are any if there are any problems, uh, they were I think deficiencies in the education system or the corporate training mm -hmm. um, system. And one of the, so one of the things we did uh, was put a lot of effort into training. Mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, sometimes just very basic training like workplace safety, and at the other end some really highly intensive. Um, detailed management training mm -hmm. uh, which lifted the skills of the workforce a lot okay. uh, but the other the other challenge of working in Thailand was what you might call the political factor mm -hmm. now the media business is very very sensitive to um, to confidence mm -hmm. um, if there's a lack of confidence then the advertising dries up because the business doesn't know where to spend its money so I came here in uh, 05 and by the end of 05 We've got the, the yellow shirts revving up, yeah. <laughs> uh, then we've got 06 and the coup, then we've got uh, the yellow shirts in full cry, then we've got the red shirts. Mm -hmm. um, a whole period of political instability and um, right across the board in the media, mm -hmm. the revenue just dried right up. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was working in that uh, environment 
trying to make a buck for the company mm -hmm. um, when, when the revenue was just disappearing. And it was very frustrating. It was one year I took almost 100 million baht straight out of production costs, Makers. like that. Yeah. And it made no difference, because really? <laughs> the revenue the revenue fell by more than that. Right. So the bottom line of that year was worse than the year before. So it, it, um, it, there's a sense, I guess, in that um, in which I wasn't successful, mm. because I, I couldn't improve that bottom line. Mm. Um, but as I think, in the sense of, it was the company a stronger company? Was it a more nimble company? Yeah. Was it better able to meet the the challenges of the future? Okay. I think I probably was successful. I'd like to think I was. And what, what do you feel now? I mean, now you, you you're taking your foot off the pedal. But what do you, what do you think is going to happen with the with the uh, ASEAN community if it if it works with the the opening of, of certain uh, borders and uh, new possibility of new workforces coming in? Is that is that a, a threat or is that something you think companies should embrace? I think um, a, an opening of borders is always an opportunity. Um, and it's a great opportunity for a country like Thailand, which is one of the stronger uh, countries and stronger economies in the region. My, um, I'm a little, bit, a little bit anxious that Thailand's not uh, not ready for it mm -hmm. in some ways. There's a, there's a bit of work that needs to be done in the bureaucracy and government, for instance. Um, just as an example, <coughs> I went to a briefing on this uh, a few months ago, mm -hmm. and the uh, the lady from the government who was talking about it said, was asked a question, sorry, about uh, foreign workers coming in. Mm -hmm. And she said, of course, of course they can come in. Mm -hmm. It's open borders. However, you'll still need a work permit. Well, in that case, there's no, there's no open borders. That's right? it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So we must have yeah. see if the, if the, if the, uh, at the bureaucratic level, okay. if the government can respond. Okay. Uh, David, one of your favourite questions is, uh, what, what are you doing? What do you do when you're not being you? But now you're, 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 you're you can be you. You can just be you. So what, are, what are your plans now? Uh, do you actually ever retire? Do you, you know, I mean, you're not going in and doing a daily job, but no, I'm not. I'm. Um, I go and I go and work out a bit. Uh, I catch up with friends a bit. Mm. I do a bit of emails, a bit of reading that, uh, that I enjoy doing. Um, my uh, my wife has some uh, some lovely riverside land up country mm -hmm. where she wants we want to build a home together she wants to do a um a restaurant and homestay business okay. there um and if she doesn't I'll, i'm going to let her do the hard work mm -hmm. but if she doesn't mind a little bit of advice on the marketing maybe i can help out maybe there maybe you can help her there yeah. okay David, it's great that you've joined us tonight for the uh, corporate networking, and I know that you've you've, you've joined us uh, on a few occasions. So, final question: Are you a mover or are you a shaker? <laughs> well, a mover and a shaker is, by definition, someone who wields influence or power. Mm. At the moment, I'm neither. You're neither. <laughs> However, you're just here for the beer. I'm just here for the beer. <laughs> um, I've seen circumstances where people have just been shakers. Yeah and it can be very destructive. And, and a few times in my career, mm -hmm. I've been called in to bring things back to earth, uh, following on people who are just shakers. Okay. I think you have to also have to be a mover okay. to make sure you move the operation forward. forward. So in that sense, I think maybe I'm a little bit more of a mover mm -hmm. and less of a shaker. Okay, but you recognize that shaking exists. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and it's often very necessary. Yes. Okay. Yes. David, you're, you're a very, very interesting gentleman. Thank you very much for taking time and I wish you great success in your retirement. I'm sure you're going to be very happy and um, I'm sure working out with, uh, with your wife now in your, your, your new location is going to be wonderful. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, we're going to wrap it up. See you again for another Spotlight interview. Remember, Movers and Shakers, corporate networking every month here in the Thai capital. See you again. Bye-bye.